We're continuing to look at the work of the Holy Spirit, and uh, we've uh, we look at what the Holy Spirit does. The, the empowers, He gives life, He gives power for service. The Holy Spirit purifies, He produces in us the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, he reveals truth. The Holy Spirit illuminates God's word to our minds and our hearts. He brings conviction of sin and revelation of our innermost needs. Uh, he gives evidence of God's presence, uh, bringing glory to Jesus and evidence of his work and presence. He guides and directs uh, God's people and he unifies. And the Holy Spirit gives stronger and weaker evidence of the presence and the blessing of God. And then we begin to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives gifts for ministry. A spiritual gift is an ability that's empowered by the Holy Spirit and used in any ministry in the church. Uh, these include gifts that are related to natural God-given abilities and those that are seen as more supernatural. They're all, uh, they are given for the good of everyone and they are all to be used for the edification and the building up of others. Uh, the purpose of spiritual gifts, uh, spiritual gifts are given to equip the church to carry out its ministry until Jesus returns. And Paul here connects the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the return of Christ, suggesting that the gifts are given to the church for the period between Jesus' ascension and his return, which is this age of the church. Uh, they were also given as a foretaste of what's to come. All of these gifts are just a pale glimpse into what is to come. Gifts of knowledge are just a glimpse into the knowledge of God. Then we will know in full. Uh, gifts of faith, uh, then our faith will be complete. Uh, gifts of healing and uh, will give way to perfect health uh, when we, uh, Christ returns and we are together with him in the new heaven and the new earth. So what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? And how many gifts are there? Well, the New Testament uh, lists specific spiritual gifts in six different passages. One we had read first just today, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 8 to 10, and then also 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Ephesians 4 and verse 11. Romans 12, 6 to 8. 1 Corinthians 7, 7 and on 1 Peter 4, 1, all of which we'll look at in time. What's obvious about these lists is that they're all quite different. No one list has all these gifts, and only prophecy is mentioned in all of them, except for in 1 Corinthians 7, where the subject was specific to marriage. Paul says each has his own special gift from God. One of one kind and one of another. It's important for us to understand that this is true for every single believer. God has given each one their own special gift or gifts. He misses no one out. God has given you a gift to use for the work of the kingdom of God. For a long time I didn't believe that. I had this picture of God lining up all his children, giving them, each, out, giving them each gifts, but he completely missed me out. And that was a lie from the devil, a lie that I believed for a long time, and a lie that just leads to defeat in our lives. I'm pretty useless at things you'll get to know as you get to know more. Because then I spent a long time wanting other people's gifts. Have you ever been there? No. You're not like me, are you? <laughs> you see, I want to sing like Celine Dion. <laughs> that might look a bit weird, <laughs> but I, I just uh, I thought, if oh, God gave me that gift, how I could touch so many lives. <laughs> anyway, uh, for a long time, uh, we wanted other people's gifts, especially the gift of singing. Uh, and I missed out on the blessing and the joy of using and developing the gifts that God had given me. God makes no mistakes. The gifts he has given you is the perfect gift for you and is essential for the well-being of the body of the church. 
So the gift that God has given you is the perfect gift for you. And it is also essential for the healthy uh, life and growth of the body of the church. Later on, maybe we will uh, look at finding our gifts and how we do that. Paul was never attempting to give us a complete list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit because they are numerous. But here are the lists uh, that Paul has given us. 1 Corinthians 12 and 28 says, First are apostles, second prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles, those who have the gift of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verses 8 uh, to 10, it says, To one person the Holy Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same, same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. And still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. Ephesians 4 and verse 11 says, Now these are the gifts uh, God gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Romans 6 and 8. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If God has uh, given you leadership ability, take responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 7 says, But I wish uh, everyone were single, just as I, yet each person has a special gift from God, one of one kind or of another. And Paul was speaking of the gift of celibacy. 1 Peter 4 and 11 says, Do you have a gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you will do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Quite a long list. You can read through them all uh, for yourself at home. But as we see from Paul's list, there's no common order to the, the gifts. Paul lists a series of examples as they come to his mind and that are relevant to the context at the, ta context at the time. For example, when talking about marriage, he mentions the gift of celibacy. But also, some of the gifts have many different expressions and different people. The gift of serving, for example, can be expressed through many different gifts in many different ways. For example, you know, it can be in being there for someone, giving a lift, making meals, helping with cleaning, providing professional care, like doctors, nurses, police, funeral care. And so we could go on, all come under that uh, gift of serving, but all individual gifts. And that's just under one. Uh, so we can imagine we did that with all of the gifts that would have taken Paul a long time to write them all down and I don't think he would have ever uh, got to the end of them because I think it's uh, as unlimited as God is uh, so but then there's also overlap like teaching uh, but teaching can also be serving because uh, we can by teaching people we can be serving them to uh, help them to grow and develop and to uh, be able to live a life to get jobs to uh, achieve in their future. 
As we saw the last time, all of our gifts are to use uh, from a place of service and we're to have that servant heart. Prophesy, teaching, leadership, and many real situations, they all overlap or can often overlap each other. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are as varied as we are all unique. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are as varied as we are all unique. The gifts that God, the Holy Spirit, gives us are uniquely perfect for exactly the you that God created. Not wonderful? The gift that the Holy Spirit will give you is uniquely for you and fits uniquely to who you are. And, and whenever we're doing uh, the things that God has gifted us to do, there's that, there is that feeling inside. There's, it's like who you are and what you're doing come together. And they just fit beautifully like a glove. Doesn't mean it's easy, but there's that sense of that just fits you and, and you just know that this is for you and this is who you are. And that's why I don't think there's anywhere or there's any attempt uh, for Paul or the scripture to give us a, a limited uh, list of what the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The, the gifts of the Holy Spirit is any ability that God has given you to use in his service, whatever that might be. So Paul would have had a problem. He would have had to have written down the gift of computing, <laughs> which was quite hard for him to do back all those years ago. Huh? And, and the, the danger is that if you try, if Paul had tried to list every indiv- and cater for every individual gift, that's what happened. And then things change over life and things get left out and people will come and say, Joe? Aye. You're good at computers? Aye. That's no in the Bible. <laughs> that's no a gift of the Holy Spirit. You can't use that for God's glory. Paul has never has tried to give an exhaustive list because it is whatever ability that God has given you that is uh, for you to use uh, for the work of his kingdom. So the gifts that the God, the Holy Spirit, gives us are uniquely perfect for exactly the you that God created. And I'm pretty slow and stupid, as you've figured out by now. And I like to go down the wrong roads a brave bit before God manages to turn me around and get me to go the right road. And, and probably for uh, most of uh, 30 years of my life, I kept trying to go different roads from what God wanted me to go and uh, God gradually. But after 34, 35 years, the one thing that I said I would never do, uh, God managed to get me to do, uh, was to be a pastor. And you know, whenever God got me to do what he had wanted me to do, and what he had gifted me to do, do you know what I discovered? It fitted. <laughs> All the other things never fitted. <laughs> they were hard work, and they were uncomfortable. I'm not saying being a pastor is no hard work, but it fits. And there's, there's that, that lovely feeling of, oh, of wholeness and completeness that you're, that you're actually living out and doing what you were created to do for God. So we need to forget about other people's gifts and find what gifts God has given each one of us and then surrender them to the anointing and the empowering of the Holy Spirit. We live in a time when the wonder of uniqueness is being eroded away. Everyone wants to look the same as everyone else. People spend a fortune to change their noses, to expand their lips, to have the look of what's supposed to be beauty. But they miss the point, and 
We all have our wee pet hates, but that really winds me up. God, just, why would people want to all look the same? Why? And, and you watch them on TV and that, that, that's like carbon copies, do you know what I mean? You could draw a picture of what it was, everybody was going to look like. And it, it just breaks your heart because they miss the wonder of, the, of their uniqueness. Of their uniqueness. And I know looking at any... I'm not going to have any biblical arguments or views of it. That is just, as Paul said, this is just my own opinion. Uh, but, and you see, people when they're my age or a little bit older and, and, and they've got everything done to make them look like the bits that you can see on there look like 18. But it's no real. You know, you miss the years uh, that, that have, uh, life has brought to their, their faith and their expressions and their life. But there's, a, there, there's like, no one wants to appreciate the wonder of uniqueness. That every one of us is totally unique. There's no one else in the world like me. And you say, thank goodness. And I say, thank goodness. And that's not that people, somebody has come and say, oh, mate, so so up the road, you've just your double, whatever. But, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And God made you unique. And, I, and that baffles me. Because everything that, my mind only goes so far. And I don't know how many billion people have been born since Adam. But surely you must be running out of design for our fingerprints. <laughs> how, can, how can two never be the same? It just... But that's how special God is. And that's how special God wants you and me to be. That we are totally unique. He hasn't got another you. And he hasn't got another me. You're so precious to him. Because we are unique. That wasn't in my sermon. That's just me getting carried away. If every tree looked the same, there would be no beauty in it. There'd be no wonder. There'd be no autumn, spring, or summer. The wonder and beauty is this, that no two trees are exactly the same. And when you look out at the woodland or the forest, what, what do you notice? You notice, oh, look, that one's that shape, and that's that shape. Look, that's a nice reddy colour, that one's a bright green. It, it, it's, it's the uniqueness that gives it all beauty. And it's our uniqueness that gives us our beauty. The wonder and the beauty is this, that no two trees are exactly the same, and together they weave a beauty beyond our words. Uniqueness is so mind-blowing. I've no lost the plot. I still have to do it with our gifts. You realize that, that our gifts are unique to each of us and for who we are, to fit who we are. Uniqueness is so mind-blowing that God makes sure that no two snowflakes are ever the same. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? It matters. And God has created you and me uh, unique. There's no one else like us. And we've got a unique role to play in the work of his kingdom. And he's got a gift to give you and me that, that are exactly for who we are. That fit us for who we are. I wondered, one of the things I wanted to be was an evangelist. And I've met some wonderful evangelists and uh, Brenda's husband was one. But... They, could, they just walked up and chatted to everybody. <laughs> you know, and they could just be talking to Joe Bloggs two minutes and they'd be telling about Jesus and all. And I would be going like this. And I would be, you know, I, I, I'm good if I know you and I can talk to you, but put me in a place full of street. And I'd just shrivel. So it didn't fit, did it? But it fits this. Because I get to know you and then I can sit down to you and I can talk. And I can share my heart. 
So as a church family, we all need to recognize our own beauty in Christ. We need to embrace our uniqueness and allow God to weave us together as a beautiful and complete tapestry. And that's what God wants to do with his church. Weave us as our different uh, uh, people, personalities, gifts, talents, and, and to bring us all together and to weave us all together to make something that is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Where we give the Holy Spirit the freedom, he will weave us into the beautiful bride of Christ. His character is that of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. A church whose values are and everything to reflect the love and the heart of the Lord Jesus. Seeking the leadership of the Holy Spirit through prayer, the Bible and the gathered community of the church. To love, to reflect God's love for us to all without prejudice or judgment. To service, to reflect the servant heart of Jesus to all in need. And devotion, committed to worship and work of ministry in our community and the wider world. Integrity, to adhere to moral and ethical principles with moral character and honesty in line with the Bible's teaching. And to be community, cultivating relationships and building up one another in Christ, providing help and support to all. Our mission is centered around Christ's teaching to reflect the love and heart of Jesus as reflected in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And God does all that when we allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in our lives, to take us as we are and to take us as he created us to be and to uh, accept the gifts that he's given us as ours and then to weave them together to be fit perfectly. You know, I've met some weird people in my day. I can say that because it's not really what I'm going to say. You're all, you're all getting worried what I'm going to say. But, you know, you talk to them out there and they say, I love cleaning. <laughs> Give me a duster uh, and a hoover and uh, I'm in heaven. <laughs> Maybe they've got a gift. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? I'd I, 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 I do that sometimes, but that, I didn't love that. But one time, can you imagine the church where we all have all them different gifts? Whether it's hoovering, whether it's uh, cleaning, whether it's preaching, whether it's singing, whether it's doing the welcoming people at the door, whatever gifts and abilities God has given you, and we bring them, and we bring them all together, and they all fit to make us to be the beauty of Christ here on earth. Isn't that wonderful? And that's what's behind the whole list and idea of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God says, I want you to take the gifts that I've given you, and they're numerous. Stop looking at everything. Well, I've not got that gift. Enough. Take the gift you've got. And often in church work and ministry, it's no uh, uh, always people to preach or to sing or to, it's, it's, it's to do some of the other things. Because folks sit and say, I haven't got any gift. And then we've got people like Linda. I give Linda things that, that, that would drive me around the bend. That I would I'd be grey in the head and I would give up and I wouldn't even get it done. And Linda says, no bother. <laughs> and she brings it back to me, well, you all done. You know, it, it, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? And whatever your gifts are, offer them to the Lord. And you say, well, Trevor, I'm in the church, you know, and you know, I'm, I'm a, a gifted, uh, drawn uh, pictures, but I don't know what to do with it. Well, come and see me. We'll find a way to use drawn pictures. Because pictures are powerful things. Evelyn drew me a picture when I was unwell that I was used in my sermon here. It was powerful. So whatever it is, Let's offer it to the Lord and allow God to use it to enrich our church. 
and to enrich our fellowship for his glory. To do all of that, God wants to come with us. He wants us to come with broken and contrite hearts, filled with the Holy Spirit, using the gifts that he has given us as we live to serve one another. Amen. Let's pray.